Today we're talking about Tessa Morlin, which is a growth hormone secreagogue. And this video is at the request of my friend and colleague, Dr. Stephen Debos of the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. So Tessa Morlin works as an endogenous analog of what's known as growth hormone releasing hormone. And GHRH is released from the hypothalamus and then GHRH tells the anterior pituitary to make growth hormone. And when growth hormones released, it has a downstream stimulation on the production of IGF-1 from the liver. So testimonial was released, I believe in 2009, 2010, under the FDA approved name called eGrifta, and it was indicated for patients who have HIV lipodystrophy. HIV lipodystrophy is a condition where you have a redistribution of your fat, or you should say a change in your body composition. So you have a reduction in subcutaneous fat, but you have an increase in visceral fat, particularly central visceral adiposity. So all around the torso. So you have a reduction of fat in the limbs, so arms, legs, also an increase of fat on the dorso cervical region, which is back here by the shoulder blades. And we sometimes refer to that as the buffalo hump. And some of the consequences of HIV lipodystrophy are increased central adiposity, which can lead to fatty liver disease, insulin resistance, metabolic dyscrasias, such as increased triglycerides, worsening lipid profile, as well as increased cardiovascular risk. And HIV lipodystrophy can be a result of the antiretroviral drugs, such as the protease inhibitors. Even if they're not on the drugs, some patients with HIV can still experience lipodystrophy, but it is more highly correlated with the administration and utilization of the HIV antiretrovirals. So some treatments of HIV lipodystrophy include things such as metformin or drugs belonging to a class of drugs such as the TZDs. So a drug like that would be pioglitazone. Some people elect for plastic surgery. And the last one, which brings us here, which is tessamorlin. And the reason tessamorlin has been implicated and utilized as a tool in treating lipodystrophy is because we know that growth hormone is great at breaking down fat tissue. It does so through a process called lipolysis, and there's several proposed mechanisms of action of how it does this, and hormone-sensitive lipase is one of the pathways. Adipose triglyceride lipase is another pathway it does this, as well as other mechanisms of action that we don't fully know. In some of the HIV lipodystrophy trials, it was shown that testimorlin can help reduce EAT, which is visceral adipose tissue, upwards of 15% in the intervention group, whereas the group who were receiving placebo practically had no change whatsoever. It was less than 1% as to be expected. Now, the results for the testimonial treated group, it, yes, it did sustain those results as long as they were remaining on the drug. Besides reductions in visceral fat, the patients treated also demonstrated improvements in liver fat. So, fatty liver disease, which has now been renamed MASH, M-A-S-H, which means metabolic associated dysfunction steatohepatitis because it encompasses a constellation of different things that's going on. Besides improving MASH and or what we call fatty liver disease, it's also been shown to reduce triglycerides. In the studies, it's shown about a 50-point-ish reduction. And cholesterol levels, it also showed about a 30% reduction as well. Now, in the lipodystrophy groups, though, once they discontinue the drug, it's possible that they could reaccumulate some of that fat. Can we extrapolate these same results to the general population who does not have lipodystrophy, who does not have HIV, who are not on antiretroviral drugs? That I don't know. And lastly, it's demonstrated ongoing and static improvements in IGF-1 production from the liver, which is to be expected. Now, I have gripes about IGF-1 testing, which include the fact that IGF-1 isn't the most specific for GH production because there's other factors at play. I mean, you could have GH resistance, liver disease, thyroid disease, estradiol production. There's multiple things going into play when it comes to IGF-1 production, but I digress. So not only can testimorlin improve you cosmetically, it can also improve you metabolically. Next, let's talk about safety concerns of testimorlin. The biggest safety concern would be Malignancy, which if you have a malignancy that you know about, you shouldn't take this drug, period. But then again, if you have a malignancy, chances are you're probably not that worried about reducing visceral fat. Glucose intolerance, which an increase in your blood sugar could theoretically occur with this drug. If you're an otherwise healthy person, i.e. someone who doesn't have a metabolic dysfunction such as insulin resistance, MASH, obesity, something like that, I probably wouldn't be overtly concerned about glucose intolerance. Now, let's say you are someone who does have lipodystrophy. That in of itself 
puts you in a milieu that predisposes you to having high blood sugar, and then you add a drug that could theoretically possibly increase that, and that's why you could possibly see a concern there. A little bit of fluid retention is pretty darn common. Some people will complain about arthralgias, which is some joint ache, joint pain, and IGF-mediated drugs are somewhat known for doing that. And urticaria, which occurs in about three to five percent of people, and that's just itchy rash and flushing. Otherwise, it's a pretty well-tolerated drug, to be quite honest with you. Personally, what I've seen the most clinically and anecdotally is flushing and itchiness at the injection site. And lastly, what I've seen, again, clinically and in practice is that Tessa Moreland goes great with TRT and with the GLP-1. That triple stack has a very compounding effect on a patient's composition and overall metabolic health. As long as the patient is tolerating the drugs well, putting in the work, eating right, training hard like they should be, I see that combination work incredibly well. Shout out to Steve for wanting me to touch base on this drug and dig a little deeper into it. If you all have any questions, leave it in the comments, give me a shout, and we can talk more. Thanks.